<clears throat> good, good morning. Uh, I had the unhappy experience of, re of having to read this article in the Arizona Republic, which I read every day in order to keep up with what's going on in Arizona. This is Montini, who has been writing for the Republic for over lo quite a long time before abortion was even legalized. That's in 73. And uh, if my memory serves me right, which I think it does, it, he has been a very long time columnist for this paper. And from the beginning, uh, reading it, uh, it was opposing a lot of the principles that people in Arizona live by with a large majority of Mormons and so on, Catholics. But anyway, here he is saying, abortion opponents lack follow-up. Then I turn over and read that Montini has, is reporting on the legislature's latest attempt to restrict abortion. Now, they, he says, they're going to try to restrict it to 20 months, or 20 uh, weeks, and after that, they're trying to put restriction on abortion with uh, requiring mothers to look at sonograms, recognize that this is a real baby, and so on. Well, here he is. Now, this is what we've been contending with uh, ever since abortion was legalized, and it's gotten more and more concentrated is the, op the opponents like Montini uh, concentrate on what the governor and the Republican governor, by the way, Janet Brewer, has done to limit child care, cuts to the budget, cuts to their Medicare. And he says, and this is accusing abortion opponents uh, that they have no more concern for a child that's brought into the world than for a puppy brought home from the pound. What oh. the hell does that mean? Well, that means that... Well, you explain abo that to me. Yes, abortion opponents don't care about living children. That is what they have pounded away at us every time they oh, talk about this. Minute. You are, you are getting... And now, Montini says, they're trying to force, force what? women to have their babies. When all these children are getting abused, they're brought in the world that these opponents don't care a thing about. And he cites other cuts that the budget makers have made that affect children in Arizona. So every time there is any kind of cut... Montini and others in this paper go to it to prove that abortion, those opposed to abortion, don't care about living children. Uh, now, wait a They minute. don't care about the children they've now, wait got. A, wait a second here. Okay? Well, to me, that's a scurrilous attack. Oh, yes. Not based Spell in that word. facts. Spell scurrilous. S C U R R I L I O U S. And what does it mean? <laughs> it means unprincipled attack on people who oppose abortion, who for do not believe in it, think it's a violent solution, and Martini doesn't seem to get that if people are encouraged to a violent solution like legalized abortion, they will take advantage of it. They will be tempted because well, now, wait a minute. we have seen that happen with one million abortions I, a I, year I a puppy, in this country. I brought a puppy home from, uh, you know... Um, oh, you never brought a puppy home in your life. All right, my ex-wife brought okay, a puppy Okay, well, home. let's... let's it's $335 for it, folks. <laughs> oh, well. And I had, to take uh -huh. it, I had to take it to the pound and have it put to sleep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well. It bit everybody. Anyway, anyway, now that you've made your irrelevant remark. Uh, well, you compared puppies with... Uh, uh, it, he's saying that the abortion opponents aren't concerned enough about what happens with babies that are living. Who's going to so pay for the babies? We are all Who's constrained for the to care more about the babies that live and not worry about the ones that are getting killed. 
And he cites at the end the babies. That's what uh, I want to know. a rape victim came up to him in 1988 who he featured in the paper Holy crap, who said, uh, these people want to outlaw abortion. And she talks about a woman's right uh, to control her own body. What? By aborting a child that she conceived Yes, but how many problems with and that? And what about when the, the child is born? The, the child is born. Head. If this is logic, the mother who has to get up in the middle of the night, who has to no, take wait, care wait, of this wait. little the baby, problem, what right? is the difference between what a woman has to do before she has the baby than after? She is called upon by nature. Let Montini and the other people tell me how in the world the baby could be born without spending certain time in the woman's body. And how in the world are they supposed to, the woman not you, you, supposed you to be one of those uh, books, welcoming they? to this baby? Well, but they, they sitting there babies. thinking, this baby, this is what abortion opponent, uh, uh, abortion advocates have tried to convince women that they can look on this baby as an interloper, as interfering with their body. Huh. Well, it is. What? Oh, yeah. What kind of reasoning? Reasoning is that, Monty. If I wrote a letter down to the Republic and protested this column, it they would not be published. It would be years, ignored. So, so I have no recourse but to take the complaint. Put it under a false name. Put it under my name. Oh, might no, take mine. no, no, no. It would have to be. I would have to take it and say, this is the kind of skewered reasoning that we have been subjected to what, in Phoenix? by the Arizona Republic ever since. Well, how come if you... This man, you, this man, Monty, in the you, same day, in the same paper, wait, uh, wait a and second. in the news, there was uh, news that 30 tons, tons I'm talking about, of meth were picked up in... Uh, Mexican town on the way to the United States, of course. But what does Montini say about, what do we do about substance abuse in Arizona? What do we do about drug addiction? My feeling is that Montini has been writing so long for this paper. He's old. If he smokes, he's probably got smoke-related illness. You if know he if drinks, he smokes or not. he's probably, a, he could be a secret alcoholic. And he could be on <laughs> chronic pain, on um, painkillers, and his personality can be altered to the point that he can't even reason. He can't even think. He knows how that what happens when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even think about one what more, you're writing. One you more just tend I to. Keep no loaded guns in my He apartment. just tends to repeat the same. Uh, the same reasoning, the same logic over and over yeah, again, you, you see, implying of, that those legislators have better things to do than try to restrict abortion. Yeah, he says they lack follow-up. Let me tell you, the restrictions they passed for years God, were always this, stopped. What is this, Laurel and they Hardy? I'm Laurel and you're Hardy. Planned Parenthood took him into court <laughs> until they finally got dropped by a, favor, a judge favoring Planned Parenthood. It is, wasn't till Janet Brewer became president, restrictions were passed, and again Planned Parenthood stepped Brewer? up, tied them up in court. Brewer became but, president? Of no, what? of governor. Governor of Arizona. There's a hell of a big difference <laughs> Yes, there, there is. I did but not anyway, that. when uh, she, she became governor, and finally, finally, one of these restrictions after two years, almost three, has gotten out of court and out so that uh, Arizona legislators have actually been able to pass a restriction that got into law because we had too many abortion advocates, Planned Parenthood, this one, stopping this, stopping it. Janet Napolitano, Democratic governor, vetoed every abortion restricted that passed her desk. Now, this is know? I, I studied the history. I know that's what happened. She's she's Democrat. She went along with the idea. Put it down so I don't the, spill the, it on you. The Democrat. No, get away from here. I don't want that. I'm right in the end of my thing. Isn't it time? 
I, but I was just felt so upset and emotional about this same kind of arguments being presented again by my paper that I read every day. Oh, when they say there's a war on religion, opponent opposing abortion falls in the category of, in the religious category. There is a war, there has been a war, an unfair war, because when you are a paper who decides you don't want to represent everybody's opinion, well, how come and you're going to slant. This is how the press has been accused of slanting a bias. You shut out anything pro-life. Yeah, you discourage you, it. You do not print letters. You do not second. listen to anybody who disagrees with what you think. Now, when the newspaper and when the editorial staff gets to the point that they don't listen to what anybody says on the other side and they don't give the credit, credence, that is when reason has vanished and tyranny has taken over. That's exactly what tyrannical people do. They don't listen to the other people. They don't reason. They don't treat everyone. And to accuse abort abortion opponents of not caring about babies any more than they would a puppy brought home from the pound is false. It is, I can't even say. And what recourse do we have? But what recourse do we have against a press that's that powerful, that feels like they can support a columnist talking like that? What recourse do we have? Well, my recourse is you, YouTube, blogging, trying to counteract and get somebody in there who is strong enough to oppose these forces. Thank you. I'm sorry I got so excited, but... Wait a second. Boy. Uh, aren't I supposed to take... Montini. I, I've been a day, uh, more than a day, getting over what Montini said. Yeah, but see, I pay for the newspaper. <laughs> oh, and he wasn't even aware, of course, because he, he's not caring. You know?